Grab your glasses, everybody. It's time for a Moonshine Safari. Welcome, everybody, to Moonshine Safari. I'm Josh. I'm Dina. And we thank you so much for hanging in there with us. This is episode six. Can you believe it, Dina? Six episodes already. Wow, it's crazy. It is. Well, thank you so much for that. Well, uh, we'd like to give our, this is our time. We'd like to give shout outs and uh, birthdays. If you have something that you'd like for us to promote or give a shout out, please contact us at any of our uh, social media outlooks. What are some, where are some places that they can reach out to us in social media there, Dina? Well, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have Pinterest, we have Facebook, we have a YouTube account, we have email, we have a website, you name it, you can find us. You can contact us. So if you have something or a suggestion or a comment or a recipe or uh, a restaurant, uh, anything that you'd like to give a shout out to, you know, um, please do so. And we might put that on, a, on an upcoming episode and give you a shout out personally, okay? So please do that, that'd be great. Uh, but we like to give a shout out to one of our local, we like to eat locally. And we it's not that we don't like uh, chains because there's some really good chains out there. Uh, but we typically like to uh, eat like uh, at local restaurants that are uh, small businesses or, or maybe have one or two local um, uh, restaurants, something like that. But uh, this is a new one that's popped up here close to uh, us in the East Valley, and it's called uh, Union Grill and Tap uh, in Mesa. And uh, Union Grill and Tap can be found on uh, Higley and Baseline on the northwest corner. Uh, it used to be triple twos, uh, right? That was the... Correct. I mean, it's had several sort of incarnations when it was triple twos. It was had the same owners and they changed it a few times to try to make it work. And I, it doesn't seem like it ever completely worked out. And we love the food at Triple Twos. We used to go there. They had they had great food. It was just I don't know, um, and just something that wasn't working. Now this I think this is a different group of owners. But the food that we've had there so far has been has been great, pretty good. I mean, it really has. So um, I can say we haven't been over actually to visit. We've gotten some food DoorDash to us, um, and it's been really good. Well, actually, it would just it's takeout. I don't think they do. Oh, DoorDash that's right. I guess yet. it was takeout. Yeah, we got uh, Del Toro or Robin to go get it for us. That's that's correct. I guess I was thinking of uh, another place um, that we'll probably feature down the road. BJ's, uh, but uh, Union Grill and Tap in Mesa. Check them out. They have some great food. Um, all right. Stay tuned for what is Josh and Dina listening to? Woohoo. Coming up next. Hold on. What's Josh listening to? All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Moonshine Safari. This segment of what is Josh and Dina listening to as far as music? Dina, what are you listening to this week? Well, once again, I have to basically do my shout out to you because <laughs> um, it's because of you that I started listening to this group. Uh, who I've been listening to lately is Larkin Poe. And, you know, if you get into their history, apparently that there is some um, familial ties to Edgar Allan Poe, which is where the name comes from. But the women that are in this group are, I think, amazingly talented, honestly. I'm a big fan of people who are not trying to sound like someone else. We don't need, in my opinion, more people that sound like one person. We already have that person. In other words, we have an Adele. Don't go out and try to sound like Adele. Be you. So for Lark and Poe, I think that they're very much themselves. They are comfortable in their own skin and with their own talent and very bluesy. Very, yes. um, they have definitely have some original music. They also do some covers. But it's great music, and if you're into any kind of bluesy type music, you'll really like it. The voices are strong, confident, and I'm it, I'm really just really digging it. Well, I really like Larkin Poe too, and I listen to them uh, quite a bit. Check out their YouTube channel. Um, the two sisters, uh, one of them plays uh, well, one plays guitar, electric guitar, mandolin, uh, banjo. Uh, the other usually plays slide guitar, um, and just the two of them playing their instruments and they're harmonizing together. Uh, pretty amazing. Uh, I can tell you for possibly a future broadcast, we might be doing a cut. Well, I say we, uh, Dina and Robin may be doing a cover uh, of one of their 
covers uh, uh, covers <laughs> or what are their uh, what would you say their arrangements of a cover of uh, a song called Ophelia but uh, stay tuned to that but check them out Lark and Poe uh, upcoming like really cool uh, follow, subscribe to on YouTube if you check them out let, let us know if you do let us know what you think of them okay all right stay tuned to funny of the week coming up next hang tight hey Josh yeah Please say dirty things to me. Um, bath and kitchen. How about your mind? <laughs> <laughs> it's time for Pave of the Week. All right, welcome back, everybody, uh, to Moonshine Safari. You just heard our funny of the week. That was pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> and uh, coming up next is our peeve of the week. And I'm going to take the peeve of the week again. That's two weeks in a row. I'm taking it's it. It's going to be my peeve. I'm taking it. Peeve of the week. I'm taking it again, Dina. I'm taking I know, it. No, it's going to be my peeve. Oh, no. It's mine. Okay, here's my peeve of the week. People who do not read text or emails, and then they call you, and they ask you about it. Whether they want you to read it to them, or what. Or, how about when they ask you questions that were answered in the email? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I, I agree. I, it's just I, I, my blood boils when people do that. And I have some clients. Well, just happen to be the client that texts and calls and, <laughs> and emails. That's emails. shocking. They do the same. They do this too. This is one of the other peeves. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, come on now. If, if, if you ask me a question or if I send you a text or an email, there's some kind of information I'm trying to convey to you. Yeah, please read that Correct. before you respond. Don't don't respond to me and go, oh, yeah, what's this about? I don't understand or whatever. Don't, don't do that. And don't forward me an email that you haven't read. And expect me to decipher it for you. Unless you really just can't understand it. I mean, come on. It's like, read it. I don't understand what's so hard about that. Read it. Just read it. Read it. That's all. Just read it. Okay, that's P of the Week. Coming up, pro tip of the week. Dina's got that yet again because she's the pro. Coming right up. Hold on. Get out your notepads. It's time for pro tip of the week. All right. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Josh. I'm Dina. And this is Moonshine Safari. And this is our pro tip of the week. Dina, take it away. Hey, everyone. So if you're out to, say, purchase a new home or maybe even a car and you need to raise your credit score quickly, one of the quickest ways to do that if um, they let you, is raising your credit limits on your credit cards. Essentially, a lot of your score is based on how much open available credit that you have. And when you are pushing the max limit on your credit cards, it really has a tendency to tank your score. So one quick answer to that could be to call your credit card companies and see if they can raise your limits. For instance, if you have a credit card that you owe $400 on with a $500 limit, you call them, you say, hey, can I get an increase in my limit? Maybe they increase it up to a thousand. All of a sudden now you have this, you have 60% available credit as opposed to um, 20 before. So it could be an almost immediate impact to your score, maybe within 30 days or so. So that's one of the ways that people can raise their score. You can tend to get a better interest rate on your mortgage or even when you buy a car, it can have a big impact on your monthly finances. So keep that in mind if that's something that you're trying to do. All right, well, thank you so much for that pro tip. You guys pay attention to that. This stuff is valuable information uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's free. Um, so thank you so much, Dina, for sharing that with My us. My pleasure. Um, hang tight, our next segment is coming up. We're gonna continue our story uh, and this is last week. If you if you tuned in, we were talk we talked about our the proposal, and now we're going to work from the proposal up into the wedding. So hang tight for the next segment to find out what happens next. Shh, quiet and listen. It's time for marriage story of the week. I'm hey, we're picking up to our story. If you tuned in last week in our podcast, we spoke about the proposal, how I proposed to Dina on horseback. On horseback. On horseback, on her birthday. On her birthday. Uh, on her birthday. So now uh, we're working from that, from that period of our time up to the day of our wedding. 
Okay, so um, I would say probably for me after we got done at the uh, old McDonald's farm. Honestly, I don't remember what we did after that. Um, I'm guessing we probably went and ate somewhere, and then and then uh, went home to our and, each our own individual homes and, and passed out went to sleep because we <laughs> went had been to, up all night the night before. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm thinking after that we were so zonked out we probably just passed out and that was it. And it was all kind of surreal after that. But uh, we were engaged. We were engaged. We were spoken for. Uh, yeah, she was my fiance. 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 Yeah, fiance. And that would have been in the uh, in the fall or early winter of ninety two, and we, we when did we decide to set the the wedding? Did we... I think we had just been discussing. We wanted at least six months to plan because, like, you wanted six months. Well, because right? like I didn't have to all little girls, anything. I think you have this idea <laughs> about you know you need the wedding to be like this and like that. Uh huh. So, um, I thought, I thought I needed at least six months to plan. Um, 25 years has come and gone since then. And I think now I've told both of my kids, do your wedding the way you want to do your wedding. Don't feel like you have to follow a hundred years of tradition just because that's how everybody else does it. Do it for fun for you. So I think that, but, but in my mind at the time I needed the flowers, the dress, the photographer, the, the, you know, fancy invitations, the, this, the, that. So I felt like I needed at least six months. Well, um, neither one of us had a whole lot of money and, um, it wasn't like your parents could necessarily afford to pay for your wedding. Uh, the, Certainly not a big giant wedding. Right. Um, so a lot of the things you did and your mom did put together yourself. Well, and then to, then, to be fair, you were working at the church. There were a lot of ladies at the church that helped. Yep. Uh, your mom made our wedding cake. Yeah. Your my, mom made my dress. My mom made your dress. Uh, we rented, I just rented top coats for the guys. They just had to had black jeans and boots. And which boots, everybody which was had pretty cool. Pretty and then the, top, the string ties for yep. the... That's all I had that we really had to rent was the, the tuck shirt, the tie the vest and the jacket and that was pretty much it and then uh but i had and i my, still like that by the way I yeah i had my best cool. friend come out um uh, you know invited him but anyway so so working up to that you were uh we had to do things that we never done i had never lived outside of my parents house before so uh we went looking for apartments Right. Yes, we were going to need to move into an apartment, obviously, once we were married, and so right, um, we found one that was close to your work. Right. And actually, I was working at the daycare that was right next door to right your work, right across so it was the parking lot. Perfect. So it's actually, it was. the apartment was very close. So we got the apartment rented, and then we needed to furnish it. Right. So the apartment was about six, if I remember. It's 635 like, square feet, I, I still say. remember. Yeah, 635 square feet. And we didn't have, any, well, we uh, had a bed. We uh, we were going to have my bed, which was a queen size bed. Then we traded it out for a king. But uh, we bought, we furnished everything in the apartment, which was a couch, a love seat, two end tables, a coffee table, uh, kitchen table, a kitchen table, chairs. which was glass octagonal yep. glass top with the chintzy cheap brass. Well, it was like aluminum tubing painted brass. Sure. You know, you wouldn't want to sit one of those chairs for very long. They would no. bend and it just barely fit over that. You really couldn't really sit comfortably in the kitchen area. No, It, it was just, but it looked fine as long as you didn't want to sit there. But yeah, we, we, uh, we furnished it that entire apartment for like eight hundred and fifty dollars yep. something like that. It was and I it think was insane. I had um the Papa San chair. Remember I had that? Yeah, the Papa San chair. And then That's I right. had the um yeah, I I had a that. corner bookshelf that my dad had made when I was younger. Yep. And that's it. Yeah, so I mean that's that's what we started with. And um so uh I'm trying to think how long before i mean we didn't start i'm guessing the beginning of july is when we actually rented it 
Because I don't remember staying staying in there for very long before we got married. No, um, I think it was probably the beginning of July. Because I'm guessing the beginning right. of July. And I'd never moved out. I never lived outside of the house. Um, and I remember we moved in and uh, Dina had a cat. Yep. Oh, good Lord. Uh, my first night staying in the apartment by myself. It was... On, it was uh, uh, we were on the first floor, um, and uh, I was always a little nervous anyway, but staying in a new place, and especially an apartment where you have all the noises from people up above you and around you and everything going on, and you're not sure what's, you know, and you're in a new place and everything. Um, yeah, uh, in the middle of the night, I, I wake up to this sound of basically um, <laughs> some kind of demonic beast trying to suck out my soul in the middle of the night uh it sounded i don't know something like a uh, uh, like that it was just it was crazy uh and uh i grabbed my uh protective what i used to protect myself with and i oh, turned on the light and her cat was in the floor hawking up a hairball it's awesome i'd never we've never been around cats we've always been a dog dog people um never been around cats and the cat scared the living crap out of me it was just yeah that was like my first night in the apartment and that was great so that was awesome it was great and then so um so i'm guessing that was uh our wedding was on july 10th so really only nine think of it this way I lived by myself as a single bachelor for nine days. <laughs> I never even thought about that till just now. I lived as a bachelor for nine days. Yeah, and then at nine that days. time, um, my friend was house sitting, and so I was staying with her while uh, we were getting ready for the wedding as well. She was actually my maid of honor. Yeah, so. nine days. Wow. Nine days I lived by myself, you know, and scared one of those days because of that stupid cat. Because of the cat. Yeah, but uh, Which nine days. Which is pretty funny. Yeah. But anyway, so so nine days uh, in the apartment, getting stuff ready, uh, then uh, rehearsal dinner, which uh, we had at my parents' house. Which was very casual and fun. Um, yeah. Um, just, I think we kind of grilled outside mm -hmm. and just had everybody from the wedding there. Yep. And it was just relaxed and not stressful, and everybody yep. enjoyed it. My uh, my guys uh, had my cousin come in uh, from Kentucky, and my uh, best friend uh, from uh, Mississippi. Uh, they came in, and I had a good friend. My brother was also in it, and a good friend here in uh, Arizona. Uh, we're all um, my good friends, and we had uh, we had the biggest, wildest, freaking raunchiest bachelor party you could ever imagine i mean seriously i'm gonna come clean to you I, and i know i'm gonna come clean to you right now all of you guessing say wait didn't you say you're a minister that's right i did say that come clean. i'm coming clean right now you know what we did i'll tell you what we did we oh. watched heartbreak ridge uh clint eastwood and Patton. um I think there was something else. Was that the name of the strippers? <laughs> yeah, Heartbreak Courage and, and Patton. Yeah, she had a ridge on top of her head. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, there were no strippers. There were no strippers. No strippers. There, were no, there was no porn. There was no alcohol. There was uh, nothing except my good close friends, buddies, and we were in my apartment, and we were watching movies and laughing and joking and having a good, clean, wholesome time. I'll do you one better. My friend and I um, went home after the rehearsal party to my mom's house and went to sleep. Ah, well, how exciting! Just to are get we? ready for the next day. How exciting are we? So, uh, so that's it. We're gonna stop there. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk more of maybe some more of the wedding prep and the wedding in the our wedding. next podcast. Uh, coming up. So uh, if you have a wedding story, if you have a, a story about uh, your uh, rehearsal dinner that you might 
think that uh, would be funny or you'd like to share with us, please contact us and leave that as a little uh, tidbit in there. We might promote that in a future podcast, okay? All right, well, thanks so much. Hold on. Coming up next is our Moonshine Safari segment. What are we going to talk about? White lightning. White lightning. Get out your glasses. It's time for the Moonshine Safari Drinks and Recipes. All right, I'm Josh. I'm Dina. And this segment is the Moonshine Safari segment that you've been waiting for. Thank you for hanging tight through all of the show. To, if this is the place you're waiting to get the secrets of goodness, you've come to the right place. This is the right moment. This is the right moment. Okay, we are featuring Old Smoky Distillery yet again because I just we tell love you, Old Smoky. Whew, they got some good stuff. I'm just telling you. Wow. It's amazing. There. And I'm going to share. Say we the talked. I think we talked about uh, in the past. White. Their white lightning. Their white lightning is 100 proof. It is some of the best taste in just plain corn whiskey. If you take a shot of that, it's like sweet on top. And you can. And the burn hits you. And then it's just. Oh, it's so good. It's like. It's like cream corn on steroids. It's just delicious. But I have something special to share with you. Now, we haven't talked much about health and that kind of stuff because we're just sharing. But um, me personally, I try to. I, I I try to keep on a keto diet for m about three weeks out of the month, and then take a week off. And we're going to talk about diet later in the in in the shows. We're going to talk about that because Dina does certain things and we do things together, right? Like intermittent fasting, sure. stuff like that, right? So everybody who knows about keto is about low carbs. Now, anytime you mix anything with juices or anything, that you're gonna, your carbs are going to like spike. But this one is a who cares? Okay, this is going to be delicious. It's your carbs are going to go out the window because we're talking about two wonderful things. Okay, <laughs> two 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 of my most favorite things. You're talking about white lightning and pomegranate juice pomegranate pomegranate juice oh from the holy land oh pomegranates okay the holy fruit pomegranates if you don't like pomegranates i don't know what's wrong with you something's wrong with you okay so here's the recipe right so you take 50 50 50 50 pomegranate juice and white lightning okay so do that put it in a jar Mix it up, shake it up from time to time, put it in a corner, put it in a fridge, leave it there for two or three weeks. And uh, yeah, you're going to have pomegranate moonshine. Palm shine, call it whatever you want. In fact, we're not sure what to call that. If you'd like to send in some suggestions on what we could call the pomegranate white lightning moonshine recipe. Pomegranate that, lightning. That would be great. Yeah, palm. I don't know what it should be called, but that's a great one. There's also, I'm going to give you a bonus recipe. Here's the bonus recipe. The bonus recipe is white lightning. Like two shots of white lightning. Okay. Fill your glass up like a, you get a highball glass or 16 ounce glass. Uh, so two shots of white lightning, fill it up with ice, top it off with, um, uh, pomegranate juice and just leave a little bit of room for a splash of coke that's all you need or you take that 50 50 concoction that you made right the 50 50 concoction that's been sitting in your fridge for three weeks now you take some of that right and you put about three quarters of your glass of that and a quarter of your glass of soda either coke or if you want to stay if you want don't want all the carbs go with some kind of something like blue sky soda so that's the which is shot. sweetened by stevia as that's a reminder. Right. That's right. So like when I'm on when I'm on my keto uh, when I'm on my keto weeks, if I want to have some moonshine, that's what I usually do. The blue sky soda and some white lightning in there. Guess what? No carbs. No carbs. No carbs. All right. Yes, I know. There's the well. You talk about the calories. I'm not worried about that. Uh, no carbs. That's where you're looking for. Okay, carbs. So. All right, you got a bonus this week. Bonuses. Bonuses this week. Moonshine Safari. All right, that's episode six in the can. In the can. And we're so done. Thank you so much for Thank listening. Thank you. 
and your shout outs, please contact us if you have any suggestions of recipes or something you would like to try, or if you have a suggestion of a, of a moonshine we haven't tried or a whiskey or something. You know, we're not just about moonshine. We try whiskeys. Uh, we're not big wine folks. Okay? We do like different flavors of vodka too. Yeah, vodkas, whiskeys, beers, wines. Uh, not wines, I'm sorry, not wines, uh, moonshines, but not really wines, okay? So if you have suggestions, please reach out to us, and perhaps we'll feature them on an upcoming podcast. Also, check out our uh, merchandising on our website. If you, like to, if you like our stuff and our logos, there are things that you can purchase. You can buy coffee mugs and T-shirts and all kinds of stuff. Uh, a portion of that will come to us, and... Um, we appreciate any support that you can give us. If it gets popular, we'll expand it and have it directly from us. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Right. We just don't want to hold the inventory. And obviously, if we can get it, if we have enough and we can get it to ourselves, the prices will go down. Exactly. Uh, because we can, we will have, be able to buy bulk and not do it the way, you know, most places do. But we're just starting out and we don't know just what we're starting. doing. But thanks for hanging on and join us next week. For Moonshine Safari. This is Josh. I'm Nina. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Hey y'all, welcome to Moonshine Safari. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel, as well as check the description for information on our social media sites, as well as our Patreon account to help support our adventures in the Moonshine Wilderness.